Hey, it's Phil's Good Man, and I've been having a ton of fun playing Crunker's Ranked Mode. It's not perfect yet, but it's still really great to play, and I want more Crunker players to try it out. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 tips to get you started on your Crunker Ranked grind. And this video mainly pertains to 4 vs 4, because I think that it's the best game mode, it's the most fun. Um, I think Crunker as a game works really well for 4 vs 4, and it's also the mode for competitive play. But I will make videos on 1 vs 1 and 2 vs 2 modes in the future. Lastly, I'm assuming that you already have the basics of Crunker down, but if not, check out the other videos on my channel. So let's get started with number one. So this one might seem obvious, but I've seen some lost players in the 4 vs 4 ranked queue. And if you never played ranked before, what you do is you go to click the ranked button. You can queue for 1 vs 1, 2 vs 2, and 4 vs 4. You can select your region, in my case it's Americas. Crunker has an ELO rating system, so you gain points for wins, lose points for losses, and then eventually the rating system is going to take into account the skill level of players when determining how much ELO to gain or lose after a match. The good thing is that only wins and losses really matter, so individual performance in-game, kind of like an Overwatch, is not going to affect your matchmaking rating. And I like this just because it encourages better team play and less selfishness. It's always good to warm up before a ranked game, and I typically like to play at least one game before queuing for ranked. So usually I go play my game, pretend that didn't happen, and then um, what I'll do is I'll host a game. And this is just something that I do, you don't have to do it this way. After I'm um, sufficiently warmed up, uh, I just create like a private lobby, um, set the time to 60 minutes, and start the game. Um, and now I can queue freely without worrying uh, about the map changing. You can also practice your movement too. So now you're finally in a ranked game and there's a countdown. The first thing that you want to keep in your mind is to play the objective. In 4 vs 4 ranked, there's only one game mode and that's the hard point game mode. And generally I think that um, objective based modes are perfect for class based games. So I think this makes a lot of sense. But you have to remember that it is not team deathmatch. So um, getting on top of the leaderboard uh, is not important at all. Of course kills are important, but um, you want to be moving your team closer to victory by collecting points on the hard point itself. Roaming around the map to disrupt the enemy team is important, but I'm going to get to that later. Just do your best to be mindful of the objective at all times, and make sure to keep your eye on the scoreboard. I'm not talking about your personal score, but your team score. In order to succeed in ranked mode, you have to pick the right classes. So currently in ranked, um, there are no class restrictions, so multiple players can play the same classes. This does differ from tournament play, where there are usually class restrictions, so maybe class restrictions will be added in the future. Generally, you're going to want to stick to the good classes, so um, Trigger Man, um, Hunter, Run and Gun, Spray and Prey, Vince, Detective, Marksman. I'm not sure yet where Rocketeer fits in. Agent can be good for some points. Bowman, probably not, and Commando is also a solid pick. Almost forgot about Vince, really strong class as well. So um, when do you pick which classes? So um, starting off, you don't know what the enemy team lineup is going to be. So safe picks are Trigger Man, Run and Gun, Spray and Prey, um, Detective. But uh, I typically like to go with the well-balanced class, um, since you don't know who your teammates are going to be and you don't know who your opponents are going to be. So for me, I like to play the full auto classes um, when starting off the game. But it's also really important to swap classes in the middle of a match, depending on the enemy lineup and which point you're on. But when it comes to matchups, um, first of all, I'm no expert, and we also need to see how the meta evolves with the no class restriction. But anyways, you can use Detective to counter the Hunter. Um, Spray and Prey also quite strong against Hunter. You can utilize Marksman and Commando with super fast time to kills to shut down um, Trigger Man, although you don't have quite as much sustained spray with those classes. When it comes to team composition, I think it's okay to have multiple of a certain class. For example, two Trigger Man, uh, I think is pretty strong because you can really focus fire. The one thing that I do though is I always switch to Spray and Prey if there's no Spray and Prey on my team. I think it's just really strong to have someone playing a tanky role. And when it comes to different points and different maps, um, Hunter is really strong on those long sight lines. So for example, Sandstorm on certain points, like the long hallway. And Shotgun is great for doing a shotgun jump to get into a tricky spot, like the middle point, and also those close quarter situations. 
This next tip is about offense and what to do when you want to retake a point. So when you're attacking a point, you want to make sure that you coordinate your pushes. Don't trickle in one by one. You might already know this, especially if you've played other objective-based games uh, with respawns. If you trickle in, it's like not the worst thing in the world. It's better than if you were to do it in Overwatch because uh, the respawn timer is a lot shorter. But unless you're confident that you can get one or two picks, there's really no point. And you don't have to just go in um, from one angle. What you can do is keep a close eye on your teammate on the other side of the map and as they're going in, um, time the push to go in at the same time so they have to cover two different angles. After your team's captured the point, obviously you're going to want to defend it, but not just by standing there randomly, you want to make sure that you're in the right position. First thing is that you don't want your body to be exposed from two different sides, so if you have cover like a box, um, you can use that. In addition, you want to cover different angles than your teammates, Lastly, you want to be unpredictable, and you can do this by doing things like gaining elevation, if possible, jumping over the ledge and shooting, things like that. So now I want to talk about the disruptor role, which is a really important part of 4 vs 4 Krunker, and it's kind of like the DPS in other online games. So what they do is roam the map, looking for kills, trying to take one-on-one -on -one fights, and messing up the rhythm and timing of the team. Played properly, it can make really, really big differences. So here's an example from a game that I played with Suffix, who's currently the number one one versus one ranked player. You can see right here that um, super easy to take the point because if you look at the kill feed, he's fragging away. He's still roaming. And still getting kills. And in this case, two of them go in. So it's really easy to clean up those two guys because um, the rest of the teammates uh, were killed by the Disruptor and uh, they have to worry about the threat from behind as they're pushing in. When it comes to preparing for the next point, the first thing you want to do is understand the sequence of hardpoint points. You'll pick up the predetermined sequence over time, but you should at least know Sandstorm and Undergrowth because those are the maps that are currently in rotation. Often you'll want to head to the next point a bit early. So in this example, I know I have very little chance of reclaiming the point. There's not much time left anyways, so I make my way over to the next point. Here's another example of me trying to claim the point early, but this time the enemy tries to do the same thing and gets me from behind. So this next tip is called don't waste time because Krunker is such a fast paced game that you really have to do things quickly. So in this case, I die, need to catch up to my teammates, so I've got to go as fast as possible. I know that earlier I said that sometimes you want to wait up for your teammates, but just don't be idling too much. So another example is when you're switching classes, try to do it as quickly as possible. My last piece of advice is to have fun with the ranked mode because it is a work in progress and if you have fun, you'll be less frustrated. It's true that there are problems with ranked, especially the four versus four mode. It's really hard to get a game, and once you do find a game, um, you have a lever or the lobby doesn't start. There's also the lag problem, potential hackers, and more. I wouldn't worry too much about your rating right now because Sydney did say that the ELO system is a work in progress and that he's actively testing it. The good thing, at least for me, is that the 4v4 ranked games I've played have been so much fun that I can overlook a lot of these problems for now. You also get to experience the best of the Krunker community. There's kind of this sense of camaraderie, you kind of run into familiar faces. For example, Cubic is someone that I've enjoyed playing with a lot on the Silicon Valley server even before ELO system was in place. So now, regardless if you win or lose ELO points after a game, uh, if you got a good lobby, the same group of people are gonna wanna queue over and over again. So that's all for my top 10 tips on how to get started with Krunker Ranked. Again, I pretty much just focused on the four versus four mode here, but I'm looking forward to testing out one versus one and two versus two more in the future. If you haven't played 4v4 Ranked yet, I hope this video helped you out because I really encourage more people to check out this mode in the future. I really think that it has the highest potential. So this is Phil's Good Man. Thank you so much to all my subscribers and viewers. And if you're not subscribed and like the content that you're seeing, please consider it as well.